Welcome to worship from the Cargill United Methodist Church in Janesville, Wisconsin. I'm lead pastor Steve Scott, and on behalf of Pastor Songmin Kim and the entire ministry staff, we're glad that you're with us during this season of Advent. Today, I'll be sharing with you a special message, a message about the future, the year 2021 to be exact. It's a message straight from scripture, but it's also a very heartfelt message to our church and how we will be in ministry to our community in the coming year. This also is the third week of Advent, which is considered the week of joy. It's exemplified by the lighting of the pink candle and the Advent wreath. That pink candle is a symbol that as the days draw shorter and the wait for Christmas still seems long, this season is about rejoicing. Happiness can be superficial and fleeting. It could depend on whether you're having a good day or not. Joy runs deeper. Joy is abiding. Happiness might be a state of mind, but joy is a state of being. We're rejoicing in being connected with you today and hope that you will stay with us to worship. This is the third week of Advent, which means Christmas isn't far away. This year, we have something special to celebrate here at Cargill. Sixty years ago, on Christmas Eve, the Cargill United Methodist Church held its first worship service in here, this sanctuary on Wesley Avenue. So this year, on Christmas Eve, we are going to celebrate by having a procession from our former downtown location to our current church. Then we will have an outdoor Christmas Eve service in our parking lot. Now, we invited one of our church members who was here 60 years ago to talk about her memories. It was 60 years ago, and I was quite young then, and came in from the country. Uh, we lived uh, across the river uh, on the southwest side of, of town uh, and uh, I drove here to Cargill for choir practice every Thursday night and on Sundays but that was the first time of course that we were here 60 years ago then when we came on Christmas Eve it wasn't finished here but the whole narthex was filled with pine trees Wonderful. and it smelled just lovely and it was so beautiful, and everyone was so joyous. That's what I remember the most. All kinds of people milling around and ooing and eyeing over how beautiful the narthex was, and uh, then filing into the sanctuary. And, and that's almost all I can remember about the first Christmas, uh, except, of course, the service and silent night and all that that we always have. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the parts of life that wear us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The company is Christ. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this third candle of joy because company is coming, Christ is coming.
that you can have joy no matter what your circumstances. Joy is a deep feeling of knowing that God is with us no matter what. Even when we cannot seem to find the joy with our circumstances, joy can live in our hearts. In this week's message, we hear how faith and hope increase the joy in our lives. Faith, the Bible says, is the evidence of things not seen. It is also the substance of things hoped for. The year 2020 has been notable for things not seen shaping our daily lives. It has also been a year for hope. Among the things we cannot see are the faces of our congregation filling these pews, the children of our Sunday school running between classrooms, the fellowship hall filled with people drinking coffee and eating cookies between worship services. We miss sounds, too. The full choir singing and the bells pealing, the banter of people meeting in the halls. It's a sign of the importance of these markers of our church life together that we miss them so much. But I stand before you today to say, the church is still the church. We're still doing ministry, and we are, perhaps, walking closer with Christ today than in what we might call a normal year. And that's because Christ especially drew close to those who suffered, those who were lonely, those who were sick. Christ came to console us in times of duress. We need Christ as much now as ever. 
And we were called to be the church for just such a time as this. So today, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your prayers, for this church, for your friends in this congregation, for your pastors and our ministry staff. Thank you for staying in touch, remaining to connected through online worship or our Facebook pages for checking in with one another. And thank you for your financial support, both what you have pledged for 2020 and the additional gifts that many of you have shared with Cargill during the pandemic. As we look to 2021, we stand at the doorstep of what may prove to be a pivotal year in the ministry of Cargill United Methodist Church. To pivot means to turn. In basketball, when you pivot, you keep one foot in place while holding the ball and turning with your other foot. That's a metaphor for being the church today. We're keeping one foot rooted in the traditions and strengths of Cargill UMC. But a changing world and changing community means we're looking in new directions, too. This is the year to rediscover the urgency with which we witness to the world of Christ's love and healing power. This is the year we reach new people who need hope and encouragement. This may be the year when we emerge from a pandemic with an even clearer sense of vital ministry. Inspiring worship, quality learning, and a vision of compelling mission both inside of our building and outside of our walls. The Church of Jesus Christ has faced challenges before. A pandemic is new to us, but not unprecedented. God has been with us through difficulties before. There's a scene in the movie Apollo 13, a true story about a catastrophe in outer space, when the director of the space program laments, this could be the worst disaster NASA has ever experienced. Flight director Gene Kranz looks up and says, with all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. What will for us as the Cargill United Methodist Church be a defining moment at this point in our history? Being grounded in all that you have grown to love about this congregation, can we also pivot to face new challenges, welcome new people, and reach out with the love of Christ to those who have never experienced his grace? Toward the end of the Gospel of John, there's a moment when the disciples are full of sorrow and angst. The world, it seems, has conspired against them, and they are losing hope. They're feeling persecuted, and worse, the sense of community they have felt with Jesus is threatened. Similar to the ways that we have been forced into disconnection in these past several months for our public health's sake, Jesus tells the disciples, you will be scattered, each one to his home, and he acknowledges how difficult it is to be alone. History is replete with stories of Christians who have been alone for extended periods of time, voluntarily in the desert or forced into the wilderness, involuntarily in a real or in a metaphorical prison. But those stories also show how people came through those experiences knowing that God was with them. So Jesus turns to his disciples at this moment when they were full of sorrow, and he reminds them that he is, in fact, the Son of God. Through our faith in him, we are never alone. And then he tells them, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. He speaks those words to you and I today. And he speaks to the church the wider church, wherever it is throughout the world, and the Cargill United Methodist Church. What will be our mission in the year to come? In many ways, the same as it has always been, to grow passionate followers of Jesus Christ who serve the community. The vision, though, is to connect new people to God, one another, and the world. We do this work of the church together. 
It's not just the pastors or the missions committee or the church staff. It is all of us together. I share these words with you today for two reasons. To remind us that there is no challenge the church cannot overcome. Remember the Apostle Paul's words to the Romans. In all things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. For I am convinced that nothing, neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. The second reason for today's message is this. We prayerfully ask for your generous financial support of the ministries of the Cargill Church in 2021. In a church I served years ago, a woman would come up to me every fall, which is about the time the pastor would typically preach the stewardship sermon. That's the churchy phrase for the annual financial appeal. And she'd say, I hope you don't preach about money again this year. Seems like all the church talks about is money. Well, I would gently remind her that public radio and her college alma mater did more pledge drives and fundraising each year than the church does. But there's a biblical precedent for this message to you today. Paul, whom I quoted just a moment ago in his encouragement to the church at Rome, also wrote to the church at Corinth, the letter to the Corinthians, and he began by commending them for their abundant joy during what had been a time of severe affliction. And he writes, Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in eagerness, now we want you to excel in generosity. And he appeals for their financial support of the church. I don't say this as a command, he writes, but as an opportunity for you to exhibit your faith by your actions. I'm giving my advice, Paul writes, it is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but desire to do something, to give your support of the church according to your means. It is in this spirit that we again thank you for how you have supported Cargill in the year past. We're sensitive to the fact that this has been a trying year for many, as the pandemic has disrupted many people's personal economy as well. Which is why in scripture Jesus commended the poor widow who put into the offering what may have been for others a paltry amount, but for her was a generous gift of her faith. And why Jesus also says, by contrast, the one to whom much is given, much also is expected. Much has been given to the Cargill Church, and many blessings have flowed from here. I believe Jesus looks to us in a time of pandemic and encourages us that now much is expected of us as well. As we pivot into the future, we ask that you consider making a pledge of financial support for Cargill United Methodist Church for the year to come. You may pledge a weekly, a monthly, an annual amount. If you're on our mailing list, you'll receive a letter in a few days with a pledge card we invite you to return that card to us. Or any of you can also visit us online at cargillumc.org and look for the button that says Donate Online. In either event, you can elect to make your contributions online or mail your regular offerings to us if you prefer. We continue to work full-time at Cargill UMC to carry out the ministry of Jesus Christ. Your support for the church at this critical juncture will help us not only to meet the needs of the present, but prepare for a faithful future. A year from now, it's my prayer that someone out there will be giving thanks that they have come to know God more deeply because of what Cargill United Methodist Church has done in Christ's name. What a fitting season to sing those praises, a season of gold and myrrh and gifts of greatest price, to sing our grateful praises to the Christ child dear, sing we now of Christmas, Noel, 
sing we here. Amen. to celebrate the Christmas season, come through the radio, TV, emails, websites, and newsletters. But we are not so sure about that. We have thought, hope, and peace, and now we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring into our lives. So many people are in need. We have friends and family members who are suffering from loss, illnesses, and alienation. We want them to be healthy and happy, and we want to celebrate the Christmas season together with our beloved people. But we cannot make that happen now. So we humbly come to you and bring the names in our hearts. Loving God, we ask for your healing mercy and rest in the assurance of your loving presence with them. That is a comfort to us. But we also stand in need of your healing restoration. We are feeling tired, discouraged, disconnected, isolated, and exhausted. Slow us down, Lord. Help us to feel the joy of your love from the inside out and in every direction. Remind us that your gift of joy is freely given to us so that we may be healed and be a blessing to someone else. Touch our hearts and spirits so that your joy may spring from our lips and our lives. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And when they asked Jesus, how should we pray? He said to them, pray like this. And we invite you to now pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be with you all now and forever. Amen.